Hello, my name is Todd Mount. I'm the current chair of the Board of Trustees of the Greater Kanawha Valley Foundation. Thank you for your interest in our uh, report to the community, our first ever video report to the community. We're really sorry we couldn't see you in person today. Uh, thank you for your service and thank you for your support. I'd like to acknowledge my fellow board members uh, and thank them so much for their leadership and their support and their service to our organization and to our community. Uh, first, our Vice Chair, Susan Shoemate, our Secretary and our Longtime Investment Committee Chair, Bob Orders, Ted Armbrecht III, uh, Longtime Investment Committee member and our newest board member, Will Carter, Dr. Jason Castle, Georgette George, Dickinson Gould, our immediate past chair, Charlie Loeb, our distributions committee chair, which is probably one of, if not the funnest uh, and best position to have on the board, Monica Jansen. Uh, Monica has, has served as our distributions chair, committee chair since I first became involved in the organization several years ago. And she'll be rolling off the board at the end of the year. And Monica, we're gonna very much miss you. Um, Sean Mayberry, Deborah Sullivan, Sandy Thomas. Also, uh, during 2019, one of our great board members moved back to New Orleans where she's from. And we just wanna say we appreciate how much energy and thoughtfulness Dr. Michelle Easton brought to her service as a board member, as well as her service as program chair. Michelle, we miss you. And anytime you wanna come back, we'd be glad to have you. Please keep in touch. We also lost one of our great friends and leaders. Um, Nell Chilton. Nell had a long time involvement, not only in, in this great community, but in this organization. Uh, she was a long time committee member, a long time board member. She uh, served as president or chair, excuse me, of the board. Um, her contributions of time and thoughtfulness and generosity uh, are, are too much to count. Among so many things she accomplished for our organization is that she presided over our transition to a new model of grant making. And she did that through the use of community meetings, board member retreats, uh, a community foundation consultant, and a lot, lot, lot of elbow grease, talking, community building, and, and energy. Um, so our current constitution, the way that we do things, uh, is owed in large part to Nell's leadership, as well as the leadership of the remaining board members uh, at that time. So uh, her impact on our organization and on our community as a whole will be felt for years to come. Uh, her intellect was rivaled only by her empathy. She was as effective at long-term high-level planning as she was at hands-on, one-on-one interaction. Uh, she was a lion and she was a mama bear. And Nell, we miss you and we love you and we thank you. Two of the biggest changes that we've worked on in 2019 and are following up on now uh, are our trust conversion process. I spoke about that a little bit last year and I'll try not to bore you too much with it, but I'm gonna explain uh, what's happened as well as our new physical space. So in relation to the trust conversion process, the Greater Kanawha Valley Foundation was formed in the 1960s as a community foundation. As the law relating to such charitable organizations changed over time, a second organization was created in the 1980s called TGKVF Inc. The difference was it was a corporation that could hold money on its own as opposed to a community foundation whose money was kept in trust and serviced by financial institutions. A, a third development in the law happened in recent years, and that permitted converting the trust monies that were held under the Greater Kanawha Valley Foundation into corporate assets. Now, if you're not asleep yet, I'll tell you why that's important. And it's because banks who have, banks were the trustees of that money. And as such, they had much more management obligations and duties leading to much higher trust 
fees than what a bank would charge for custodial accounts. So the opportunity to convert the, the initial foundation trust funds into corporate funds uh, is something that will free up a lot of money through savings from uh, bank management fees. And when I say a lot, I mean a lot. And uh, so I'd like to really compliment our investment committee on this and our attorneys at Bulls Rice, Melody Simpson and her team. They did phenomenal work. And particularly Bob Orders did a lot of the heavy warring on this. But our uh, investment consultant has informed us that that change will result in a savings of $350,000 approximately in fees in one year. And that will continue every year going forward. So that's the kind of impact that has. So while it may make your eyes gloss over to think about it to start with, what we think about is the amazing impact, additional impact in the community that that savings is going to permit our organization to have. So thanks again to the investment committee, Bob Orders and the legal team. You've done great work. Kristen Mounts, uh, uh, great work. Thank you. The other uh, uh, development of 2019 is after a long and exhaustive search of appropriate space to move the foundation's physical uh, location, we have uh, entered into a long-term lease with the DuPont Hotel LLC. Uh, the DuPont Ho Hotel LLC is redeveloping the space at 170 Summer Street. And most of you will know that as the old B&B Loans building. Um, so uh, now we're into 2020 and mainly we're talking about 2019, but I can say right now, even under the circumstances of the pandemic, construction is moving along on an appropriate and rapid pace. And what I hope is next year when Susan Shoemate is here giving this address, she will be able to report to you uh, uh, that we've moved successfully into our new space, that everything went well, and uh, invite you to come by and see us. So thank you, all of you, once again, for, for your time, for your support, for your commitment, not only to our organization, but to all the work that goes into making this community a great one to live in. Thank you. Greetings, I am Michelle Foster, President and CEO of the Greater Canal Valley Foundation. I miss seeing you live at the Clay Center this year, but I pray you and your family are safe and healthy as we live through these times of great uncertainty. Rest assured that the foundation is going above and beyond to meet the needs of those who are severely impacted by the pandemic. This is my fifth annual report to the community, and I still believe that I have the best, most fun job in town leading this illustrious organization that ranks in the top 100 of community foundations nationwide. Today I stand before you representing a team of dynamic professionals who are committed to the foundation's mission and vision. We have Kristen Mounts, CFO, Christine Spaulding, Controller, Jane Powell, Communications Director, Stephanie Heyer, Senior Program Officer, handling the arts and culture and education portfolios. Megan Simpson, Health. Todd Dorcas, Community Economic Development. Susan Hoover, Scholarships. Derek Vance, Basic Needs and Special Initiatives. Candace Krell, our Grants Manager. Josh McClung, our Accountant. Angela Dobson, our Financial Assistant and Sarah Furrow, our admin assistant. Thank you team for all that you do to keep the foundation operating efficiently and effectively. I commend you on your unwavering dedication as we serve our donors and nonprofit partners. It is truly a joy to work with you. There is another team of professionals who provide the foundation with behind the scenes support all year long. They include our legal counsel, Melody Simpson and Emily Lambright of Bowles Rice. Our investment advisor, 
Greg the Sisto of Prime Buckholds. Impact Measurement and Evaluation, Midwest Evaluation and Research. Graphic Design, Event Production and Branding, Augie, Gray, and Drake. IT, Amelie Business Systems. Web, our website, handled by Cucumber and Company, Photography, Will Price, and Film Production, Jason Adams of Adams Film. We appreciate you. The foundation exists because this state, our beautiful West Virginia, has had and continues to have extraordinarily generous people. People whose love for their fellow man compel them to put that love into action by sharing their assets. These are people who believe that better is possible here in West Virginia. Thank you to all of our donors. There are also hundreds of people who liberally give of their time and talents, assisting us in the efficient functioning of the foundation. They include our 13 board of trustees, numerous volunteers who serve on our investment, scholarship, distribution program, finance, and advisory committees, as well as on our task groups for health, education, and community economic development. Thank you for your service to the foundation. Your contributions are critical to the success of our efforts. Please know that we appreciate you. Ladies and gentlemen, I have examined the essentials of our community foundation, including our assets under management, our donor base, our community investments, our processes, our systems, and our relationships. And it, it is my pleasure to report that the state of the foundation is solid. The foundation continues to serve as a navigator for generous individuals, families, and businesses interested in making West Virginia an even better place to live, work, learn, play, and raise a family. We received $6.4 million in contributions compared to $4.9 million in 2018 and distributed $10.73 million in grants and scholarships. Included in our 2019 contributions was a million dollars from a new partner, the Chan Zuckerberg Initiative. That will, this partnership will support criminal justice reform efforts in West Virginia. At the end of 2019, the foundation's assets totaled $266 million. To those of you who have made financial contributions during the year, thank you for caring enough to invest in your community through your community foundation. To those of you who have received a 2019 grant, it is our pleasure to partner with you for positive community impact. Please refer to the TGKVF by the numbers video along with our financial overview video for further insight into 2019's uh, distributions, investment performance, and projected impact. I'm also delighted to report that in 2019, we invested $736,000 directly into the lives of 362 West Virginians through our statewide scholarship program. Additionally, the Bridge of Hope Fund, a, a, a scholarship fund established by Fruit Pharmacy for people living in recovery from substance use disorders, that fund awarded 35 scholarships compared to just five in 2018. The foundation is more than just a source of funding. We are also a source of capacity building support aimed at strengthening our nonprofit partners. Towards this end, we offered individual evaluation and performance co measurement coaching to current proactive grantees reaching 150 individuals and their organizations. Other capacity building efforts included philanthropy's role in building a culture of substance use disorder solutions with special guest, Dr. Patrice Harris, 
American Medical Association president. We reached 42 stakeholders. Telling your story, leading with values-based communications, a collaboration with the 84 agency, reaching 56 partners. A groundwater approach to racial equity presented in partnership with the West Virginia Nonprofit Association reached 130 attendees. Three advancing entrepreneurship in the Greater Kanawha Valley gatherings reaching 46 attendees and fiduciary training for nonprofit boards presented in partnership with bb and Bank with 63 attendees. In April, we lost Nell Chilton, a revered member of our foundation family who lived and breathed philanthropy, giving generously to many organizations in our area, giving generously of her time, her talents, and her treasures for many decades. Philanthropy was in Nell's DNA. For many years, Nell was a great encourager to me. As you know, to encourage is to give support, confidence, or hope to someone. Today, I would like to encourage three TGKVF change makers. Nonprofit partners who have exemplified innovation, resilience, and collaborative spirit. In our education priority area, the Changemaker Award goes to Enact. On behalf of Enact and LifeBridge AmeriCorps, I really appreciate this. It shows that. People see the impact that's happening and maybe it'll inspire more people to try to be mentors and you don't have to be mentors in the school full time, but just mentor one person and it, it will change the world. In the health priority area, the Change Maker Award goes to Canal County Schools. Oh, thank you so much. I. I'm speechless. Thank you. Thank you so much. It has been a pleasure and a blessing to be able to, to work with in the funding that you all have provided. Thank you. In the Community Economic Development Priority Area, the Change Maker Award goes to West Virginia Community Development Hub. Thank you so much for this beautiful award. It's a real honor to be recognized as a change maker organization by the Greater Kanawha Valley Foundation. And it really matters to us, especially in this time, to have a group, to have the hub recognized in this way. It affirms the work that we've been doing for the last 10 years, and it recommits us to continuing that work for the next 10 years. So thank you so much. Congratulations to all of our change makers. I know that you will continue to make us proud in the years to come. Thank you, everyone. I look forward to seeing you soon, live and in person in the community. <laughs>